Hello, and welcome to another video in my series on understanding life after. The point of this series is to give you an understanding of some of the deeper mechanics of the game. In the last video, we talked about camp tech, and we went over the entire technology R&D interface. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different, as the previous one was aimed at both mayors, officers, and regular members, whereas this video is primarily going to be focusing on information that is important to a mayor or an officer. Let's get started here. We're going to go over the camp data center. Now, in the game, the camp data center will be referred to as a couple of different things. You'll see camp data center, town hall data center, and Model City. Anytime you see those names in any description or any part of the game, it's referring to this right here. You have four different sections and a couple of buttons at the bottom. These sections are period info, members, construction info, and fiscal info. The two most important sections here are definitely going to be your period info and members. So let's go over these two first. In period info, you will see the requirements to upgrade your camp to the next age. Upgrading your camp to a new age gives you access to more items in the vendor shops and more recipes in your workshops downtown. So you can see for Neon, for example, we need a certain number of resources and we need prosperity and management in order to upgrade. Upgrading your camp also gives you a higher cap to your member count and it's generally important for camp to upgrade as soon as possible because not only does it give you access to more recipes and items but it also attracts more people to your camp so somebody is more likely to join a neon camp than they are post-industrial and so forth so the factors that allow you to upgrade your camp are primarily prosperity and resources the resources are pretty easy to get because most of the time you can end up just buying them but prosperity will be a challenge for most camps unless they're super active so how do you get prosperity so right here it'll say current level progress so we have 39,000 out of 41,000 for the next level you can think of prosperity as sort of an experience bar for your camp the only difference between this and a regular xp bar is that this can actually go down if certain things in your camp happen so getting prosperity is pretty simple the only thing is that you can't really do this alone. You really need every member in your camp to be doing all of this stuff daily in order for your prosperity to go up in any meaningful way. First up, we have pay camp operation costs. So this is the daily operation costs that are required for your camp to function and paying them will give you a bonus of prosperity. Completing camp patrol route quests. So every day you have a quota of how many patrols you need to complete and completing them will save you one management and also give you a good amount of prosperity. The amount of prosperity that you get for doing these two things is determined on your camp's current period. Upgrade camp period. So when you actually hit the upgrade button after you meet the requirements, you actually get a little bit of prosperity for doing that. Research camp technologies. So unlocking tech gives you a little bit of prosperity. And also there is at least one tech in every category, nature, industry, and military that will give you prosperity for running that specific tech. Open up camp territories. So this means that every time that you expand territory within your camp, you will get a small amount of prosperity. Build private buildings. This is super important. So every structure that is placed within a manor inside your camp will generate six prosperity. In vaults, it will generate three prosperity. So a house that has 200 structure, which is pretty standard, will give 1200 prosperity and a vault with the same will give about 600 as you can see that's pretty helpful if every single member is doing that then your prosperity will go up quite fast buying camp goods up to 100 per day what this means is that every transaction that you make with a vendor in camp will generate one prosperity so if i was to buy one milk for instance that generates one prosperity but if i buy two ice that's also only one prosperity because it's one prosperity per transaction. As I'm making single transactions, I'm generating one prosperity for each one. You can see here that prosperity level affects camp period and territory expansion. So again, you need a certain amount of prosperity to upgrade your camp. And you can also see the territory expansion. So in order to unlock some territories, you need a certain amount of prosperity. Your prosperity can go down if a member is kicked or leaves camp, partially because of the actual 
prosperity penalty for them leaving or being kicked, but also because the private building's value that they are adding to your camp will be removed. You can see at the bottom the maximum level for every period from primitive to information age. In the members section, it will show you how many officers you have and how many citizens you have. The mayor is able to add officers over here. You can create a tag for your officer that will show up in chat. If you'd like to add color to this, you can go like this for blue, so that's pound B, or you could do pink, or green, or black, however you'd like to do that. You can select which candidate you'd like to add. Permission settings, I'm not going to go over every single one of these because most of them are self-explanatory, but a couple of important ones, apply modify events. This allows officers to change the time and difficulty of your events, so do be careful with that. Down here, approve buildings. This allows your officer to approve applications for permission to build in your Charlestown transfer station. So I wouldn't really give this to somebody that's not really handling your Charlestown base as it allows them to let random players build inside that area. And you don't necessarily always want that unless you trust them. On this side of the screen, you'll see a full list of every single player in your camp. It will show their manor level and their manor's address. In the active section, it's very similar, although it shows player name, status, so when they were last online, and also their current location. So Malder, for instance, was online six hours ago, and he was in Assyrian Hills. In data, you will see the player name. Their seven day input refers to a maximum of 2,000 contribution that they can gain from submitting items to the vault per week. This resets on Monday, so every Monday, it, this will reset to zero and you can get up to 2,000 until Sunday. Tech points, this just shows the total number of tech points that the individual has submitted to your camp. So if you see a member with zero tech points, it's likely because they are inactive or maybe they just don't know much about the tech system and they could probably use a little bit of guidance. Camp contribution, this refers to the total value of items that they have submitted to the camp vault. It's very important that you get people to submit items to your camp vault so that your camp can afford to run techs. We talked a lot about tech in the previous video, and there are a lot of very strong bonuses there. So it's important to make sure that your camp is able to afford these things, and the only way to really do that is to make sure that all of your active members are submitting items to the vault daily. You can inform them, hey, we need stone or wood or whatever the case may be. Survivors are NPCs that will roam around your camp. These are generated from completing Cascade. They give you a certain number of prosperity every day, and it will also tell you how much time they are going to stay in your camp for. Construction info is pretty simple. It just tells you the maximum value of the infrastructure that you can have inside your camp and how much you've already used. It tells you how many composite building materials are in your camp, and it shows the actual number of each individual infrastructure and the length of your highway in meters. In here, it will tell you that, you know, you have 20 utility, 30 leisure, 60 camp infrastructure. This is a pretty broad category and 28 highway. And it also tells you the total construction value of these items. So if you have one category that's pretty high, it might be worth looking around for items of that category that you really don't need in your camp and deleting them so that you can fill it out with more useful stuff. In the permission section, an officer or the mayor with the infrastructure permission has the ability to not only delete infrastructure but also add or remove players from the list that are able to place things within the camp. Fiscal info. This section used to be a lot more useful back when the game had a tax system. It was very helpful for tracking which days people were shipping the most items and if you really needed resources you could increase the tax for that day and it would help you get more items to your vault for your operation costs. But as tax is no longer in the game, this section is almost completely useless except for the feature here which allows you to change the goal that shows up inside your camp vault. So when a player opens the vault and goes to the resource tab, this list of items will be the first thing they see, so it kind of guides the player to be able to submit the right items for the next upgrade. Down here you can see every day for the last week, and it tells you how many of each resource was submitted to the vault. Down here, this used to show the proportion of supplies resources, but really they just need to delete this because it's ultimately useless now. Back when there was tax in the game, Every time a member would harvest items in their farmland, a small portion of that would automatically go to the camp vault. But as this is no longer in the game, there really is no proportion for this to show. So this bar will just be filled with camp events, which is still actually completely inaccurate because this is a total of camp events and also 
people directly adding items to the vault. This list just shows the hierarchy of contribution. So if the mayor was to go inactive for 24 hours or leave the camp, the next highest player with contribution would become the mayor automatically. And that's essentially what this shows. Down here is the manage camp button. This section is talking about the camp merge system. And the merge system is somewhat of an overly complicated system in general. I don't recommend using it just because there are a lot of restrictions on this system and it's a little bit more difficult to do this than it is to just leave the camp and join a new one. So if you have two camps with low and medium AP, they can use this system to merge into each other and it will combine the two camps. In camp set, you can change the name of your camp for 2000 gold. You can set the tag. You can put a brief intro that people will see when they apply to your camp. This is very limited to how many characters you can use, so we have to put something sort of brief here. The recommended button allows players to see your camp when they go to search for a new camp to join. So if you have this set to no, it will be very difficult for players to find your camp. Access. If you have this set to free entry, this will allow any member who meets the minimum level required to join your camp to just instantly join. If you have it set to approval required, they can apply and their application has to be approved by the mayor or any officer with the accept member's permission. In the events section, you can change the difficulty for whatever the current event that you're looking at is, and you can also view the rewards that your camp gets for completing it. Now the rewards here are going to be scaled based on your level, so not everybody is going to receive the same items, and you can also see the rank reward for doing the most damage. In change difficulty, you can see if there would be a reward difference. So as you can see back here at level 11, we get a different set of items and also a lower quantity. For trap, you can actually change the difficulty and the time. If your camp is having trouble completing trap all the way to 100%, I actually recommend that you drop it one level so that your camp can actually receive these rewards for getting 100% complete. Camp spray paint is pretty simple. It just allows you to change your spray paint. I don't know why they had to write an entire book on changing your spray paint, but the option is there. Over here in specialty, you can see the options that you have if your camp is a shelter land to be able to plant in your plantation. Be aware that it does cost 500 gold per day and you do have to hit the begin or start planting button here. The items that you can choose here will depend on what type of shelter land you are. All that you need to become a shelter land is to reach the electric period and talk to this NPC. He will let you select the date and the time for your relocation. Any camp that reaches electric has the ability to move to the snowfield shelter land. And you can also see that relocation does not cost anything to go back here. But if I wanted to move back to Snow Highlands after going back to the old camp, I believe it would cost about 20,000 gold. Down here where it says latest schedule, this is a system where the mayor or any officer with the schedule permission will be able to add little reminders. This system is actually very interesting because it goes very in depth. Like if we go to create a new one, we could say just reminder for something. We can choose the day. We can choose the time frame. So 12 to 1400. You can have it automatically repeat. So if you want it to repeat every Friday, Thursday, and Monday for some reason, you can. And you can also leave a little message here. So reminder to do something. And then you can hit save. And then as you can see, here's our little reminder on Thursday. You can leave a comment. So thanks. I don't really know what the point of this system is. It seems like it would be very helpful if it actually sent out notifications to all of the members of camp. Like we have this little dummy notification here for patrols as an example, and it does not tell members about this at all. The only way that a member would actually see any of this is if they opened up the schedule. So I'm not entirely sure why this exists. It it's actually quite useless. In camp history, you can see, you know, things like the last time that you were a trade city, any achievements that your camp has reached. You can see things like territory expansion, the date the camp was founded, things of that nature. The technology info button just tells you that you need to go to your town hall's R&D device to be able to make any changes to tech. So that's a pretty brief rundown of the town hall data center. If I forgot anything, or if you have any questions, 
feel free to leave a comment or send me a message in game and I will be sure to answer any questions as best as possible. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned next Friday. I don't know what kind of video it will be but we'll see. There's no rabbit. What are you shit? <laughs> Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Yeah. Oh no. That's that squeaky wabbit.